ISO 27001, Annex A519, Information Security and Supplier Relationships. Right, the next three Annex A controls that we're going to look at are all really about the management of third parties. They're about securing the supply chain. The supply chain represents one of your biggest risks. Uh, based really on the fact that you can't control it, right? You're going to engage with suppliers, but you can't control them. You can't control and understand their information security and about how they manage information security. So there are some things that we're going to do to mitigate that risk of our third party suppliers. We're going to look at the processes that we need. We're going to look at agreements and then we're going to look at security within the ICT, uh, information communication technology, IT chain. So this one, particularly looking at supplier uh, relationships and the processes that go along with that. So what do we need for that? Well, within the ISO 27001 toolkit, there is an entire section dedicated to third party supplier management. There is another video and a guide on how to conduct a third party supplier audit. There is another uh, video blog and guide within that toolkit and on the YouTube that talks you through that process in detail. I'm not going to do that. You can reference that if you need it. But you're going to need a third party supplier management process. If you're large enough and you're a big enough organization, it is likely that you have a supplier management team or a supplier manager. And if that's the case, you're going to check in with them and make sure that some of the uh, things that are required of the standard are covered off, which they should be. Uh, but if they're not, you're going to make sure that they are. Uh, and if you're coming out this uh, new and you don't have a third party supplier manager, then you're going to get a copy of that third party supplier management process. You're going to get a copy of that third party supplier register, watch the videos and work your way through that. But what does the standard itself actually say? Well, the standard says processes and procedures should be defined and implemented to manage the information security risks associated with the use of suppliers, products or services. So that's basically what I've just said. Right. We're going to put in those processes, put in those procedures that make sure that we're doing the best that we can to mitigate the risk when it comes to our third party suppliers. There are a couple of guiding principles in here, really. So we're going to have that third party supplier policy again provided as part of the toolkit and the template. You've got that. Go and watch the video. Go and read the uh, blog uh, associated with that. There's a couple of principles that we need to go through. Right. So our process should cover how to identify and document suppliers and supplier types, right? That's gonna go on the supplier register. We want a process for evaluating suppliers according to process data that's transmitted, what's shared with them, the level of confidentiality. So this is about an evaluation process, again, baked into my process. We wanna review the controls that are in place. So we're gonna review the controls that are in place at our supplier and with our supplier. For the controls that are in place at our supplier, if you're a small organization, we are going to rely on industry-wide certifications uh, for them. We're going to rely on other people's work, right? So rather than us going in and conducting those internal audits of our third-party suppliers, which large organizations can uh, do and you can do, we are going to rely on them having an industry certification uh, that is in date, covers the products and services that we are buying. It's the easiest, it's the quickest, and it meets the requirement of the standard. If you need to do an internal audit, sorry, an external audit uh, of a third party supplier, then check out the other blogs and guides on how you do that. Our process is going to look at documenting what suppliers can access, monitor, and control, right? So again, 27,001, highly documentation heavy, but we need to understand what it is uh, that they can access, what it is that they're doing, uh, how that how they're doing it. We're going to assess uh, and manage supplier risks. So through our risk management process, we're going to understand our suppliers. We're going to rank them, understood exactly who they are, and then we're going to identify and manage any risks that are associated with those. We are going to monitor and ensure compliance for information security. Now, there is guidance within that standard and there is guidance about how you can go about that, whether or not you're setting up uh, reports that you require from them to provide back to you or whether you're just relying on an industry level certification. This is going to be proportionate and appropriate to what it is that they do for you and what they're providing for you. Let me give you an example. If I have a third party IT supplier that provides for me all of my endpoint end user computing, then it is very likely that I'm going to be monitoring and reviewing on a monthly basis this basis the status of my environment. I'm going to be looking at the status of patching and antivirus and how many incidents have occurred, uh, what projects are going on and where those projects are. But you're going to put that monitoring in. You're going to ensure that they're compliant in terms of the products and services that they provide for you. And then using that certificate, we're going to make sure that they're compliant for information security overall. We're going to put in uh, mitigation, right? We're going to address any non-compliance. 
So the way that we can address non-compliance of a third party supplier where we require them to have a 27001 certificate and they don't is that we can put that supplier onto our risk register. We can record the fact that they don't have um, an industry level certificate and then we can put in compensating controls. The kind of compensating controls that we can put in there are things like, yes, we could do an audit of them. We could do a review of them. It may be the case that that third party supplier has a project plan and a timeline to achieve an industry wide certification. We can put that in as a mitigating control. Evidences that they booked the test, evidences that they've engaged with a consultant. And ultimately, we can accept the risk that our supplier doesn't have an industry certification because 27001 is a risk based system. And as long as we're managing risk by accepting the risk, documenting that and minuting that, then we're absolutely golden. Right. But you're going to mitigate uh, you're going to mitigate any non-compliance. You're going to include in there about how you your press is going to include in there about how you handle incidents things around notification. Some of these are gonna be, be driven by law, legally driven, uh, driven by compliance. You know, the timeframes in which incidents need to be reported to you, you need to report incidents to them, how you're then gonna manage that, how they're gonna manage that, that needs to be included within your process. We need to include in our process things about the availability of data. So here we're looking at disaster recovery, assurances around disaster recovery. What are your processes? What are their processes in the event that a product or service isn't available? We have to look at the management of the transfer of information. All of these are annexes in their own right, right? So you will see as we've been applying them to us, now we're gonna be applying them to our third parties and to our suppliers. Um, but we need to look at the rules and the technologies and the processes around how we transfer information. And then we need to look at the management of that information. What are the rules that we have in place with them around what we expect them to do with it? How long they expect uh, we expect them to keep it? How we expect them to dispose of it? So there's a whole piece that we need to put in around data management and data transfers. We also need to consider the process for ending the relationship with the supplier. How is that going to be handled? What are the steps that you are going to take uh, when the time comes that you have to exit out of that supplier? What are the rules? What are the processes? How do we get our data back, get our assets back, ensure that they've done what it is that they should do for the removal uh, of all of our information that's no longer appropriate to them? And we're going to be putting in place processes around what we expect in terms of security, the levels of security and the people that we expect within that. So to deliver this, the ISO 27001 toolkit, the website, the YouTube has a huge amount on the actual minutiae and the mechanics and the process steps. Those are the considerations that you need to consider. Either go and implement them or go and download the templates, but you need to be managing those suppliers. What we're then going to have is a supplier register. The supplier register is the way that we record and manage our suppliers. The supplier register has all of the key information that we require in it uh, and allows us to record and manage that key information. Things like review dates, criticality, levels of assurance, who they are, what they do, contact information. Again, videos, guides and blogs on that. Go and check those out. To satisfy the requirements of this particular Annex A, Annex A 519, Information, in secure, information Security in Supplier Relationships, get yourself a supplier management process, cover off the key points that I've addressed, have a supplier register at the back of it that manages that and be able to evidence that, and you're going to be absolutely golden. So I am Stuart Barker still. I am still the ISO 27001 Ninja. I am still super excited to be working through these tutorials with you. So until the next tutorial, which again is going to look a little bit more detail at third party suppliers. In the next one, we're actually looking at agreements and legally binding contracts with them. But until then, peace out.